All right, today I'm going to be showing you a software called Lumion. Um, it's a real-time renderer that uses your graphics card in the same way a lot of uh, rendering software is starting to do. Um, and it's a fast, real-time renderer. And I'm going to show you the basics of setting up a scene, importing a model from, in my case, Rhino. And we'll be creating uh, a few images of renders. This is the interface. Again, to move, it's W for left, D for right, W forward, S is back, Q is up, E is down, and then you can right click and hold to pan to rotate, rotate your view. So again, this is a setting that Lumion comes with. This is version 10. So you've likely modeled your projects in Rhino or SketchUp, hopefully Rhino. Um, what we're doing now is we need to import it into Lumion. So in that software, so in Rhino, you're going to export it as a Collada file, C-O-L-L-A-D-A. -A. Um, you're going to export it as a Collada file, and you're going to make sure that all of your layers um, have different materials. So in Rhino, if you have for example, you want one material to show up as wood, another material to show up as concrete. Set the, the wood, give it, put it on its own layer in Rhino, and then give it its own material. So that when you import it into Lumion, it'll come in as that uh, separate material that you can modify. Okay, so once you get into Lumion, you're going to go to Import. You're going to find that file. So you give it a model name. And then you can place it. So this will determine where you place it. So I'm going to put it here. And then there's also modified tabs here. So I can now rotate it. I want to rotate this thing. Place it. Um, you can move it by going to the Select tab here. Be careful when you move something. Um, it can, it jumps around. It's going to look for whatever flat surface you have. So in my case, it's kind of snapping it to the wrong place here. So I have to fix it, make sure that it's snapping to the ground when you move it. You'll find this kind of blue sphere here. That's what you're going to use to, to modify it, its location. So if this works, I've brought in this new model, and each material I have is going to come in as a different material that I can modify. Um, so I can, now that I've brought this in, if there's more things I want to add, I can do them here. So more geometry. So if I want to add people, you can double click that. They have a whole, cat whole catalog of different uh, material types, people here. So a ton of different people you can add. Some people are animated, so this person comes in as walking. So if you wanted to animate uh, a whole flow of people walking around the project, you can do that. So there's a lot of stuff you can add here. Their people don't look extremely realistic. They still kind of look kind of video gamey. So there's also uh, silhouette people you can add if you want to go that route. You double click on nature. So there's trees you can add. They even have, you know, rocks and all kind, pretty much anything you can imagine to add to the scene you can. And again, just don't go overboard. Don't go crazy with entourage. Remember that you're telling people, uh, you're communicating a specific design intent. You're communicating your composition, and so that that's important. You don't want to just override everything with, you know, and put a BMW in front of the in front of the whole house and change it its design. So just be careful about what you throw into this scene. 
All right, so we can add furniture. So furniture, there's outdoor furniture here. Um, there's a kitchen thing. You know, again, don't go too crazy with this. Don't go putting a coffee pot in the middle of your rendering scene if your project isn't about that coffee pot. So be careful with the entourage you include. I would say the goal of, the, of these renderings for this project aren't necessarily realism. I would say they're about design intent. So if it's about showing even something that's a little more artistic, I'm okay with that. I wouldn't, I would prefer that over just going into realism, right? Think about what you want to communicate about your project, whether it's, you know, your shifted grid of the project, right? Maybe it makes sense to have kind of an aerial shot. Maybe it makes sense to have a ground level view in one place. So choose your views wisely, choose your scene setup accordingly. You can add lights to it. So if you're doing kind of a darker night rendering, you can click on lights. I have a couple set up here. And add another one. And then I can modify it if I click on it. Let's see. If I go to the select tool, I click on it and I can change how bright it shows up. So I like to bring the brightness down considerably because these are really bright spotlights. So those are all the objects in the objects tab. I also have the materials tab here. If you mouse over your the project you brought in, you have the ability to modify materials. So this screen that I have, I can click on that. So this is a metal screen. So I'm going to go to outdoor, metal, and then find a, a metallic looking material that I like. So double click on it. You can change how glossy something is, how reflective it is, all here. There's even you know a lot more settings below. You can change, you can put foliage on a material if you want. I can have uh, foliage growing up the side of the building. If you want ivy or something, an effect like that. Again, I wouldn't go crazy with that. You can see that kind of growing on it here. Again, not about if this, if I were to do this, this would hide the project. So again, it's cool, but at the end of the day, I still want to show this pattern. I want to show the screen. So don't, um, don't shoot yourself in the foot by adding too much stuff covering your project. All right. So I have the metallic finish that I like. I hit the, I hit the check here to accept it. I want a wood door, so I'm going to click on that, change that material. You can go indoor, outdoor, various. There's different grass types and things you can also do. I'm going to go outdoor, wood, and then just choose one of these wood textures. Hitting the green check when I'm done. So there's also glass, so I can click on that. Change the glass type. So I've, I've added people, I can add furniture to the scene. Again, this is furniture that I brought in, so this isn't coming from Rhino. Once you're happy with the scene, put your camera more or less where you want it to be. And then you're gonna come down here to the photo mode. So there's different uh, modes at the bottom. Photo is when you're gonna render, okay? so. You're going to use that. Build mode is when you're adding geometry and modifying things. Files down here, this will help you save. So I can click on that. I can say save. Saves the project. OK, so again, we're back in build mode. When we're ready to render, we click on this camera photo button. So. This has a bunch of examples because this is a sample file. Um, I'm going to go to one of these new slots here. So normally when you open up this view, these will all be open. So you just click on one and you're going to set the view for that particular um, spot. So you click on this camera and it'll store that particular view. 
Okay, so let's say I want another view. Let's say I want more of an aerial shot. I can come in. Like this. Okay, let's say I like this view. I click on the second slot and then I'm going to click store camera. Do that again for a third view that I like. Let's say this across the street view. Click on another empty slot and then click store camera. So now when I click on these, it'll take me back to each of those perspectives. So in each view, you can actually, if you mouse over the screen, you can change the focal length. So you can have a wider angle if you want. If you want super wide angle, you can. You can set the eye level by clicking on that button to be at 1.6 meters or about five or six feet. You can have a horizontal eye level. Okay, so there's there's a lot of settings. Right when you do this, this is it's going to give you still kind of a video game looking rendering if you don't change it from here. So you could click on the screen button and render it and be done with it. Um, but I want to show you guys some of the effects that you can play with in Lumion, and this is really what differentiates it from other softwares. Um, so I can go to Add Effect, this FX, and I can start choosing what effects I want to add to it. Uh, there's even a new photo matching tool, which I guess lets you take an existing photo and match the perspective of your building to the surroundings, which is really cool. Um, there's real skies you can add. A lot of stuff you can play with here. But before we do that, there's also custom style. So if you click on that, these are all presets that they've created. So there's a realistic view, interiors, night, daytime, dawn, overcast, all of those are here. So if you want to just go with a, a preset, click on that and kind of play around with it. You can see some examples that people have come up with. But again, if you want to make it from scratch, you're going to go to Add Effects. So the first thing that I, I like to do is go to Real Skies. So click on that. This will give you some actual um, HDRI photos of uh, the sky. So you can click on this image and choose the sky you like. And then you can change the heading of it. So by rotating this, I can choose where I want my sun. And notice how the sun location is affecting the reflections. It's affecting the shadows on the site. So for example, if I wanted to show the shadow from my screen, right? Again, thinking about design intent, you'll probably want the sun somewhere back here. And this is only changing it for this particular view. You'll ha you can have a different sun setting for each, you can change these settings for each photo or each rendering you come up with here. Okay, so this is kind of an overcast sun, so it's not really giving me a sharp shadow. Um, maybe that's the view I like. And then, again, go back to effects. You can go to skylight. This is that bluish light that I was telling you about. You can change how bright the scene is. Um, if you want the skylight to show up in reflections, if you want to set the render quality to ultra high, you can do that here. For, this is, again, how, how realistic that skylight is going to be, that bluish light that hits your objects. You can change the saturation if you want to bring that down. And that's the saturation of the skylight, not of the overall scene. So, again, my criticism as a designer of this rendering is that the greens are way too unrealistic, right? This looks like a video game still. So if I want to change the, the saturation, there is you can go into effects. You can do color correction and, and change that here. Um, you can set it to two point perspective. There's a bunch of camera tools that you can do here. I'm going to click this show all. So this is going to show really all of those different settings you can play with. So 
if we didn't have a real sky, you could manually change the sun location here by clicking on sun. It'll change the altitude and azimuth where it is horizontally and where it is vertically in the sky. You can turn this on if you want some, you know, that that effect where sun is hitting through is is kind of filtering through um, clouds or through dust. You see that volumetric sunlight. There's more effects you can play with there. Um, weather, so you can add precipitation. So if you want to have a kind of wet pavement look, you can do that. You can change whether it's rain or snow. So we just added snow to the scene with that effect. Otherwise, this is kind of a rain effect. Um, particle quantity, you can bring down the particles, so have less rain. The phase, so I guess from early on to later in the day, in terms of how much rain is on the ground. So you can add fog. There's a lot of effects you can play with here. So, and this is going to show you all of the effects that we've added. So we've added precipitation, skylight, real skies. You can turn any of those off by clicking on this I button just to, to change the effect. Notice our precipitation, if I turn this off, it's kind of hiding my sky. So if I don't want that, I can go back to this. Um, I can bring down this extra fog addition so that it gives me the sky that I like. And go back. So again, here are all of the different effects. If you just go down this list, you can add Aurora Borealis, which is kind of ridiculous. Again, real skies we have here. I don't know if your version of Lumion would add, add the Aurora Borealis, and I think that's a good thing. I don't want to see that. Um, autumn colors, you can add that to the tree. It just changes the color of your trees. Again, another new feature in Lumion 10 is photo matching. Depth of field um, lets you blur the background. So you can change the amount. My, so I've kind of lowered the quality of my preview here so that it, it's more compatible with my slow computer. If you want to change that, you can go down to settings here. And you can set the editor resolution up to 100 if you want editor quality and it's going to slow down the computer but it'll give you a more realistic um, view of the, the project so now this takes a little longer but it's giving me kind of a, a better update of what this will look like so I can set the focus distance I'm going to turn autofocus on so it'll focus on something close by, and then have everything else kind of blurred in the background. You can change the amount of um, blur. Again, focal distance here we can play with. But I have autofocus on, so it's overriding that, actually. I'll turn that off. Okay, so once the focus distance is set to a, a length that you like, you can go back. And again, I want to let make this less saturated. So I could do that in Photoshop, but also under Effects, um, again, there's more things you can do. What we want to do is a uh, color correction. So we can change that here. So here we can change the color, so the temperature. So if you want to make this more blue or warmer, you can do that here. So let's bring that up a little. I want to make this more warm. You can tint it, which we shouldn't, probably shouldn't do. Vibrance, if you want to make it you know, brighter colors. The brightness of the whole scene can be affected as well. You can bring that down. 
contrast again. These are all familiar if you know Photoshop. Here's saturation, so we can bring the saturation down just a little bit to make this a little more realistic looking. And again, this is the saturation for the overall project. So again, you can go really high, you can go really low here. Okay, so once it's at a level we like, we're ready to render. So once, once we're ready, I just hit this Render Photos button. If I just want to render that one photo, that's what it's going to do. And then by clicking on the size here, it'll render at a different size. Now this is the current shot. I can also say Photo Set and render the entire um, list of images that I just set. But again, I just want the current shot. I just want to render this. So we're going to, by clicking on this, there's four different preset sizes. So we just want the desktop size. I'm not really interested in creating a finished quality rendering. If you guys want a rendering that's the size of your entire board, you can hit poster and it'll it'll create a huge file that you can scale up and, and use. But again, I just want something small. So I'm going to save this to the desktop. Hit save. So once you hit save, it'll start rendering. So it's going to go through the process of calculating all of the all of the lighting effects that you set. It's going to generate all that. So it's taking a few minutes. Again, I have a lot running right now, so it's it's going to take a while. When you're doing this, you don't want to have other screens uh, set up. For example, your internet screen, you don't want to open that up over this because, again, it's using the graphics card. So if something else pops up over it, it'll pause your rendering. So keep this running and try to keep this, you know, keep this on your screen. And here's some other images that I also rendered. All right. Thanks for watching.